The average commuter will see just a boring Toyota. But this matrix is hiding a secret, an 8,000 RPM secret. Buried behind the cheap price tag and practical design lies an engine that's been tuned to slay giants. It's the first on our list of seven surprisingly fun cars that are so cheap you wouldn't expect them to be this fast. Oh, and the last one might make you look like a millionaire. Years before Lexus would collaborate with Yamaha to create the LFA, Toyota worked with the motorcycle brand to build the 2ZZ GE motor. It was a humble 1.8-liter inline-four with dual overhead cams, a member of Toyota's lightweight aluminum block ZZ series. But thanks to Yamaha's input, this engine would rise far above the competition. They gave it forged steel internals, variable valve timing, and a sky-high redline that allowed the motor to rev to 8,200 RPM before fuel cutoff. In fact, the specs were so good that Lotus borrowed the motor for their mid-engine release. But not before Toyota sprinkled it across their own lineup. The JDM powerhouse was offered in the Celica GTS, Matrix XRS, Vibe GT, and yes, even a performance Corolla. Although the stock engine produced only about 190 horsepower, it could be supercharged easily to produce over 250. Combine that with the fuel efficiency of 1800 cc's and the reliability of an early 2000s Toyota, and it's easy to see why the 2ZZ motor has become the stuff of legends. But despite the incredible performance, these cars still sell for less than five grand. Perhaps it's because of the mundane exteriors, or the fact that most models were only offered with a manual transmission. Or maybe it's simply that nobody expects a Corolla to be powered by the same stuff as a Lotus. The Fiat 500 is one of the cutest cars ever made, up there with the Beetle and the Nissan Figaro. It's probably the last thing you'd expect to gap you from a stoplight, which is exactly what makes the 500 a Barth so surprising. It's Fiat's evil twin, decked out with Scorpion badges, sport suspension, and dual intercoolers. The interior even has an added boost gauge to let you know this car means business. Dubbed the Hellmouse by reviewers, the 160 horsepower Tiny Beast may not be enough to chase down a Hellcat. But with a standard 5-speed manual, sport exhaust, and 2,500-pound curb weight, it's more than enough to get you in trouble. And cool enough to be the starter car for a Seto Corsa. You can pick up one of these bad boys for as little as six grand. although be warned, reliability isn't exactly Italy's strong suit. So if you need to prioritize low maintenance, you might want to opt for this car. Yes, I am 100% serious. The Nissan Leaf has been the butt of many jokes in the enthusiast world, thanks to its goofy styling and low power output. But Nissan's all-electric Prius Crusher is more than just an eco-friendly city hatch. Because of the instant torque from its electric motors, the 200-plus pound-feet of rotational thrust is available with one stab of the throttle. Some drivers have reported a 0-60 time of sub-7 seconds, which is about the same as a Toyota 86. Nissan even brought the Leaf out to autocross events to show off its performance, not to mention making the Nismo Leaf RC, which was a carbon fiber track beast. Best of all, since it's all electric, you won't have to worry about oil changes, CVT failures, and power mods could be as simple as a software update. Not bad for a $5,000 car. If the MX-5 is so good, why is there no MX-6? Well, actually, there is. Most enthusiasts are surprised to hear that Mazda made this. It's not a successor to the Miata like its name might suggest, but it's still a fun and engaging coupe that's rare enough to draw eyes at the local meetup. It never caught on like its roadster brother did, probably due to the fact it was based on the Ford Probe, and therefore front-wheel drive. It was also assembled in Michigan, meaning it can't really be considered JDM. And you might want to be careful what you mix the coolant with. This model replaced the 626, which was so famously boring that it's only remembered for having oscillating interior vents. So why would I call this an enthusiast car? Well, like most 90s coupes, it's manual, lightweight, and engaging to drive. It was offered with a Turbo 4 or a V6, made up to 160 horsepower, and it was praised for both the low price tag 
and impressive handling. Most enthusiasts who want a European hot hatch will choose the Volkswagen Golf. But if you want to be unexpected and surprising, consider the Volvo C30 instead. This model was sold in the United States from 2008 to 2013 and featured a 2.5 liter turbocharged inline 5, making over 200 horsepower. Volvo hoped the C30 would appeal to younger audiences, but sales numbers sadly fell short of the competition, making them pretty rare to spot today. Again, this could be due to the fact that it was front-wheel drive only. All the cars following this one will be rear-wheel drive. The good news for Volvo's C30 is that it would still make a great daily driver thanks to its high safety rating, comfortable interior, and the sub $10,000 price tag. So don't write it off just yet. To say Mazda's legendary Miata is getting expensive would be an understatement. Fortunately for us, General Motors made a long-forgotten competitor to the iconic Roadster many eons ago. Packaged as either the Pontiac Solstice or Saturn Sky, these two badge-engineered models featured the same rear-wheel drive platform engineered by Papa GM, and packing a front-engine 2.4-liter Ecotec, though a 2-liter Turbo 4 was also offered. Despite being a bit heavier than the NC Miata, these cars produced up to 260 horsepower and came with a standard 5-speed manual. Even more unexpected is the fact that a coupe version was offered, something that Mazda never officially made. Although with only 1,200 sold, these unique models are exceptionally rare and stupidly expensive. So if you can settle for the boring soft top, you'll only need to spend about 7K. When you think of Infiniti, you probably imagine boring luxury cars. Maybe you even know the brand is owned by Nissan and their reputation is stained by transmission defects and that horrible leaf. Either way, it's not a car maker that catches the attention of enthusiasts these days. But maybe it should be. The company made some fantastic driver's cars not too long ago. Things like the Z-based G35 and the V8-powered Q45. Well, Infiniti still makes a sporty coupe, and used examples can be found for less than 20 grand. It's called the Q60. This is the modern iteration of Infiniti's G-series models, which are still popular and can be found hanging around any late-night car meet. The Q60 built on that legacy with its 2013 release and subsequent 2016 makeover, including a stunning exterior design and an available twin-turbo V6 making over 300 horsepower. At $15,000 to $20,000 used, the Q60 is the most expensive car on our list, but it's also the newest, fastest, and some might argue, the prettiest. Which one would you choose to be a surprisingly fun yet still affordable daily driver? Let me know in the comments, and thanks for watching.